What's up guys and welcome to another Magic Arena video. I hope you all are doing absolutely fantastic. I hope you are enjoying Arena and War of the Spark as I am. This has been a lot of fun honestly so I'm really really excited to be recording even more with this but uh, today we are actually going to be looking at a Jeskai Super Friends list. So this is a list that Will actually sent over to me. Uh, he found posted somewhere else. I really don't know where. Uh, but I've actually seen a couple iterations of this going around and it looks really interesting. So uh, to give some basic overview, it's basically a Jeskai control deck uh, that finishes off the game with stuff like Sarkon. So uh, Sarkon uh, basically turns all of your Planeswalkers into 4-4 dragons with flying. Uh, and so you can swing him for quite a lot of damage pretty early on uh, if you can get out Sarkon and a couple other Planeswalkers, which is pretty easy to do because we do run quite a number of them. So uh, starting off, we have four Narset. Uh, keeps our opponents off of drawing cards, which is really, really nice. Uh, it also helps us dig for some things, which is great as well. Uh, we do have a one of Dovin. Uh, I've tested this deck maybe twice or three times so far. And I haven't actually gotten to play with this Dovin yet. Uh, I have played with the other one, which we do run a three of uh, as a way of uh, neutering like instant sorceries and artifacts on the opponent's side, as well as just stalling the game uh, by fogging one of their creatures. Uh, but uh, this one here basically uh, spits out little artifact tokens, I guess. And then if you can ultimate, that's great. But I feel like that's pretty pretty uh, adventurous to think that you might actually get there. So we'll see. I don't know. I just haven't had the opportunity to play with him yet. Uh, Teferi has been an absolute all-star. Uh, not only does it mean that other control decks really can't do too much uh, about the stuff that you're doing, uh, but it also uh, helps you bounce some of the uh, opposing creatures and things like that to the opponent's hand and just draw you a card. Uh, so it's really, really nice for that. I've found that that's kind of the most useful tool in the Teferi toolbox. Uh, obviously, plussing it up is perfectly fine. It does have some synergies with the deck, so it's great in that regard. But uh, generally speaking, I've found minus three is definitely the way that I go uh, almost 100% of the time so far. Uh, Kazmina's in here as well as a way to spit out some creatures and then also make it more difficult for opponents to target any of the Planeswalkers that we have out, as well as creatures, but obviously Planeswalkers is really the big draw here. Uh, making things cost two more is pretty important. Uh, spitting out the 2-2 creatures is a way to kind of ping down the opponent overall, uh, and so it does work to make Sarkon more easily kind of the kill spell, uh, but honestly the biggest thing here is just making things cost a lot more for the opponent. Uh, we do run Karn uh, as a one of the uh, Dominaria Karn as a way to draw cards. Uh, I've not found that the minus two is anything to shake a stick at because honestly, if you do have maybe Dovin the Grand Arbiter out, maybe it's worth it then, but otherwise you don't have any other artifacts in your deck. So uh, it's pretty pretty useless in that regard. But uh, that being said, there is some synergy there and it's worth noting just drawing you cards is always great too. Uh, coming in and basically being at six loyalty right away if you plus it is pretty awesome. Just means it's gonna be really difficult to kill, especially if you can play it on turn four. Uh, and then Sarkon, of course, being our last Planeswalker in the deck, as the big finisher, of course. Um, on top of that, we're running two Spark Double. Uh, this card is an absolute all-star, especially in this deck, being able to copy any Planeswalker that you've got uh, and make it a not make the copy a non-legendary, which means you can actually keep both of them out, is ridiculous. Uh, you can really, really get some great value off of that. It just feels like such a big game swing. Uh, when you can spark double up even a Teferi or something like that, it just feels great. So I love this card, absolute all-star in this deck. Outside of all of that stuff, uh, we do have a little bit of cheap interaction with uh, Spell Pierce being a pretty big one. Uh, I've found that it's really, really great against certain matchups and then obviously not so great against creature matchups. Uh, but even against like the red deck win style stuff, there's usually something that you can hit with it. In worst case scenario, you can always ditch it to uh, something like uh, Narset or something like that. So it's perfectly fine in that regard. Uh, Shock is obviously just really, really cheap, uh, efficient ways to deal with early game creatures, uh, which is really the only thing that this deck has to worry about too too badly, to be honest. Uh, as long as you can keep the board clear until like turn three or four, uh, you're pretty well set, which is kind of nice, uh, just because you've got so much stuff to do on turn three and four. So it's it's pretty great. Uh, two Lava Coil just gives you, again, that extra reach against certain creatures. Uh, exiling them is also just awesome, of course. 
Uh, what's really, really fun is because we're playing so many legendary permanents, we can play things like the Ruinous Blast here, uh, which is just an absolute uh, bomb. Uh, this 100% changes the game if you can get it out. Uh, being able to sweep the opponent's side of the board completely, basically, is insane. Obviously, against like a mirror match or something like that, it's really not going to do that much, but uh, I haven't run up against the mirror yet, so I've been very, very impressed with it. It is only a 2 of, but it is still very, very powerful. And then Jaya's Immolating Inferno as well as a way to clear creatures is also a way to just deal straight up damage to the opponent, uh, which is pretty great. So I really like this deck. Uh, of course, it's running a pretty big gambit of uh, dual lands here. The only major difference is the Interplanar Beacon. Uh, gaining you a little bit of extra life is really, really nice, uh, especially against these early aggressive decks like Red Deck Wins and things like that that you see, especially on ranked uh, play. And then obviously uh, that extra ability of being able to play mana of different colors to spend to cast Planeswalker spells is great as well. So a little bit of ramp there. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this deck. Um, we will see how it does in some casual games. We'll do our normal three game kind of rule here. So uh, I think without further ado, let's jump into game one. All right, guys, here we are for game one with this Jeskai Super Friends control deck. I'm pretty excited to test this one out. Uh, this is an interesting hand. Um, Mm. I think it's good enough to keep solely because we have Teferi. I think if we didn't, it would be just not keepable at all. Uh, we do have our finishers with Sarkon, uh, which is great. Uh, obviously, we're not looking to cast that super early, but I do think that we can uh, maybe leave up Spell Pierce early, excuse me, and then get a Teferi out hopefully very soon after that. Uh, oh, and even better. So I think what I'm going to do... Uh, I'm not going to pay the two life here. Uh, that's a pretty big tell, uh, turn one, that you either have shock or spell pierce. Um, and yes, it would have been nice to spell pierce in this as triumph, I guess, but it's really not the biggest deal in the world. Um, it is what it is. So here, uh, I'm just going to play out the sacred foundry um, and pass. We leave up spell pierce and we leave up shock uh, with the seam vents, which is great. Um, we will see what they play. That's perfectly fine. So you're going to get an extra land out, obviously, uh, which is not ideal, but it's really not the worst thing in the world. Um, and here we get to spell pierce this, which feels nice. Uh, I find that taking the spell pierce opportunities as early as possible and just keeping, keeping them off of things is usually just the best way to go. Uh, I don't see the need... Uh, to be too stingy on the spell pierces. So um, I'll go ahead and play Teferi here. Uh, we do kind of want to, especially with the Sarkons in hand, uh, we really want to start playing out Planeswalkers pretty easy, pretty quickly. And because we're under, at this time, no serious pressure. Um, ooh, that would have felt good to spell pierce, to be honest, but um, we will see what we can do here. Um, Definitely possible we could have, instead of doing uh, playing the Teferi, we could have just left up Spell Pierce. Uh, I have noticed that a lot of these green decks are, of course, going to be running Nissa, so it's not super surprising. Um, but we will see. Okay. Got three lands in hand here. Uh, unfortunately, we are stuck on lands, which is obviously not good. Um, so here... We will plus to fairy uh, because that's really all we can do, and then we will play out Dovin. Um, and I think here we will just Dovin onto the land. Um, obviously, it's not the greatest play in the world, but um, just because they'll be able to do this again. But um, unfortunately, that's kind of the best we can do at this point. Really wish we would have drawn a land there. That would have been a lot better, but that's okay. We'll see what we can do. Um, we really need to get two more lands for Sarkon, because if we can get Sarkon out, then we're going to be in fairly good shape, but this obviously is a lot of pressure, uh, which definitely is not ideal. And they are at eight here, so uh, we will have to do something about that for sure. Um, this green deck that I, I've, I've seen this, I think, two or three times so far, it actually looks really, really sweet. Um, I like that it's just mono green stompy. Um, I mean, it's kind of back to basics with it, but it's really sweet. 
got a lot of cool tools now uh, with War of the Spark, Nissa being a big one. Um, well, that's a land, but unfortunately it's not. Whew. This lag is just ideal. Um, so we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, and I think we have to preemptively shock Nissa. As much as I really don't want to, um, I'd much rather just get rid of like the Jade Light Ranger or at least do something like that, but we cannot have her emblem. Um, that just would not do it well for us. So the other option here as well, we can do this, play the second Dovin, uh, which does obviously get rid of this one, but I'm not a big fan of that. So we'll pass. Um, we could play the second Dovin, which ditches the one that we currently have, obviously, but then we also get to fog one of their other creatures, which is kind of nice. Um, but I don't think it's honestly going to matter that much here. They're going to be able to just dis distribute so many counters out. Um, and it looks like we're going to be losing this game, uh, to be honest. I just don't think there's a way out of it. Um, it would have been nice to have drawn a land last turn, and then we would have had at least the Ruinous Blast would have been a live draw. Um, but unfortunately, they took down Dovin, which means I don't think there's anything we can do, unfortunately. Um yeah, this is looking bad. So we will see. Um, I do think this is just in general a bad matchup because they are obviously just playing tons and tons of like extra valued creatures, which is great. It's a cool deck, uh, and it's definitely one of the biggest threats against this one. Um, and unfortunately, I think because we're just running a bunch of Planeswalkers, that does make it a little difficult. But... Um, I do think in general this has a lot of good matchups, so we'll we'll see what we can do here. Um, unfortunately, even drawing this land, we can play Sarkon, but it just doesn't do enough. Um, I'm going to go ahead and concede here. They're just going to swing in next turn. So pretty quick game one, unfortunately. Uh, just getting outpowered on the board was, was pretty huge. Arguably, uh, leaving up that spell pierce would have been way more important. Uh, that definitely was the game changer there. So we'll go ahead and jump into a game two and see how this does. All right, guys, here we are for game two with this Jeskai uh, Super Friends list. Game one did not go our way, uh, arguably because I misplayed and did not leave up Spell Pierce. Um, I don't know that I should have banked on Spell Pierce there, but it definitely would have been a, a bonus for sure. Uh, I am going to keep this hand. We've got a little bit of early interaction, which is great. Um, I'm going to Sacred Foundry tapped. Should I tap? Yeah, I'm going to tap. Um, Again, it's just such a big tell to leave it up untapped and then not do anything. Like, obviously, you've got a shock at that point. Uh, and we can just double shock this coming turn if we'd really like. So uh, I am okay with that. We will play Sulphur Falls here. Uh, and we'll pass. Um, we'll see what they play here. So in response, we're just going to go ahead and shock the Reassembling Skeleton. And then we'll also shock the Midnight Reaper. Uh, and then that way, next turn... Um, whoops, I did not mean to, ugh, that was a misplay. I did not mean to actually pass the turn there. Auto passing was not ideal. Um, ugh, so what does that leave us to do? Well, it's not ideal, but I do think we can shock here and then next turn plan to Dovin as well as leave up Spell Pierce. Uh, we, this also allows us to leave up Spell Pierce this turn. Not that I'm expecting them to have, uh, much that we can Spell Pierce because it's definitely just the the black sacrifice deck um but we'll see what they end up doing here um did not mean to auto pass that was 100 percent a misplay you guys will get used to misplays if you're watching these videos um first of all i really appreciate you guys oh perfect well that's just great uh first of all uh i really do appreciate everybody that has watched these videos it seems to be getting a good uh, uh a good amount of support which is fantastic uh, so I really do appreciate it from all of you guys. It's really, truly, it's fantastic. Um, but uh, you will see a lot of misplays, uh, 100%. There's no way around it. Um, I misplay all the time, and it's hilarious, if nothing else. So uh, hopefully you guys have some at least entertainment value out of it. Um, next term, we're looking to most likely Sarkon. Um, So we will Dovin, 
and we will basically neuter this. Um, play out Sarkon. Gain a life off of the interplanar beacon, which is great. Uh, now, the option here is obviously create a 4 4 or just turn our planeswalkers into a 4 4. I'm going to turn our planeswalkers into a 4 4, mostly because it pluses up Sarkon, which I think is pretty important. Um, if we were to go down too far, it just means that creatures that they play are bigger threats to Sarkon, and I obviously don't want that. Um, Braska's Contempt, sure, gets rid of Sarkon, which is not ideal. Um, and that's going to take Dovin down to two. We do, of course, have backup Dovin, which is kind of nice. But uh, I think what we'll do here, we're going to play Teferi, uh, gain a life off of that. I think what we'll do is then bounce uh, the Death Baron. And they're going to go ahead and concede. Okay, so that does it for game two. Obviously, I don't know that we definitely... I don't think we had it locked up there by any means. But we were starting to, I guess, gain a little bit of advantage there. Uh, just in terms of tempo. So it looked like we were going to win it. But obviously, it was still very early to tell. Uh, but you can see the power level of this deck being able to uh, play out just a ton of Planeswalkers and get a ton of value off of it. We only had two or three there at that point. But, like, we are doing pretty well. So... We'll see how this goes in uh, game three. Hopefully we have another win here and we can get uh, at least two out of three in this one. All right, guys, here we are for game three. Again, with this Jeskai control list, uh, mostly super friends list. Really, really fun one. Uh, do I like this hand? It's not ideal. Uh, I'll be honest. It's not ideal at all. Um, solely because, yes, this ramps you into Planeswalkers, but it's different colored mana. Uh, granted, I guess we can chain into it. So yeah, I'll keep it. I don't know that that's a good keep, to be honest. Um, I feel like it's potentially not. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and play Sulphur Falls first. <clears throat> um, and we'll see how things go. We can chain these into each other, which is great. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and play that. Um, next turn we'll play a second Planar Beacon. And then play Narset, most likely. Um, ooh, love that draw. Um, yeah, so this can filter into the other, which is really nice. Um, and it doesn't really matter what. And then we will play Narset. Um, this is going to not only gain us a couple life, uh, which is always great, but also allow us to dig a little bit for... Something useful. Uh, Shock actually seems great here. Uh, it does seem like we are against just a Merfolk deck. Um, and in that case, I'd much rather have Shock than a lot of other options, just because it's going to be able to deal with some of their early game stuff pretty easily. Keep the pressure off a little bit until we can get Sarkon out, which honestly, we could get Sarkon out, I want to say, as early as next turn, but I might be wrong. Ooh, now that's interesting. Uh, so that's going to take down Narset. That's fair. Uh, did not expect one with the win there. That's 100% an interesting one. <laughs> um, so here uh, we run out, I believe, the third beacon. Um, and then we will do this. Uh, and we want blue and white. Uh, the plan here is to bounce. Um, we'll get colorless there. The plan here is just to bounce the river sneak. Uh, which just means it's going to lose the uh, the enchant creature buff uh, and just mean they have nothing on board, uh, which is great. It's also going to draw us a card, which is pretty nice. So uh, bounce river sneak, get rid of one with the wind, draw us into another shock, which is great. So now ideally what we'll be able to do is shock their next play uh, and then start running out some more powerful things like Sarkon. We're gaining a lot of life off of these planar beacons, which is just fantastic. Um, absolutely love that. And here we can start shocking a bunch of stuff. So here, shock the elite uh, before this hits the board. This gets into play. Uh, and then do we want to, how do we want to do this is the question. Because um, I guess we can play Sarkhan, right? Red, red. Yeah, let's. 
red and blue. Um, do, the question is, do I want to play Kazmina or do I want to play that? But I think I want to play, um, I think I kind of want to play Kazmina here. Um, I kind of just want to get as many things out as possible and then Sarkon can finish the game like super quickly, which would be great. Um, uh, we'll go ahead and do this and we will discard second to fairy, I believe is the correct choice. We're going to go ahead and play Sacred Foundry out, pay two and shock the river sneak uh, just to make sure we're under absolutely no pressure. Um, and then we will just go ahead and plus to fairy. Uh, and that's going to be it for our turn. Next turn, we plan to Sarkon and then swing in for a lot of damage. <laughs> um, at least that's the plan. We do also have the infinite or the Immolating Inferno, which may be a better option, honestly, because uh, we can not only get rid of Jace, but we can also get rid of this and the, the like deal straight up damage to the opponent. Um, maybe that's the way to do it. Or, no, honestly, let's just do this. Let's Sarkon. Let's gain some life. And then let's go ahead and move to combat. Okay, so next. We're going to send one there, one there. We'll leave this back just as a blocker. Uh, get rid of Jace, steal four to them. This means next turn we've got even more firepower. Um, we, oops, uh, well, no, that's fine. Um, we'll discard the Inferno. Um, I think that's a better option uh, because then the Ruinous Blast is just going to be able to sweep their board no matter what they do. And then ideally, I mean, yeah, that doesn't deal with Jace, I guess, but like, I'm not that worried about Jace, so I kind of don't care. Um, sure, draw your card, my friend. That's totally fine. Uh, and yeah, they can swing in with this, but we can just either block here or depending on what they attack, it just doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, I'm 100% just gonna block it. <laughs> um, so we'll block there. Yeah, we lose a 2 2, but it also clears their 2 2, which seems ideal. Um, so now again, we can swing in with everything, which I think we'll do. We'll do this first. Uh, I think we'll all attack for, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, that, that's just dead. I forgot they were at 16. Okay. So there you can really see the power of Sarkon, uh, being able to finish off the game like super quick in just a turn or two is great. I really, really love this list. Um, this is definitely something that I think I'm going to start playing on ranked a little bit more. Uh, I have played it two or three times again. That was all on ranked and it's done. I think it was about a two out of three win rate uh, so far. So obviously I haven't tested it extensively. We're going to keep going with it though. Uh, and so if we end up releasing more videos just on this deck, it'll probably be ranked play, not just casual play. Uh, but there you can really see the highlight of the deck. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next uh, MTG Arena video. I almost said Crack-A-Pack video. Uh, I'll see you next time, guys.